Hello, welcome back to Cracking the Cryptic and loads going on on the channel. I am really pleased how well received the um, Hitchhiker's Guide Hunt has been. That's the June monthly reward on Patreon. If you aren't a member of Patreon, it may well be worth signing up to get a look at that. Um, it's proving very popular. We've had quite a number of correct solutions in, obviously, at this point, um, and probably more to come. So well done if you've been enjoying that. Loads of other content on Patreon, of course. Our podcast, the episode two, is out on the platforms now. So um, lots of ways of following Cracking the Cryptic. You can, of course, buy our apps as well, and they're all in the description field um, under the video, as is the way to play this puzzle, which has come in to debut puzzle from uh, a college student called Snacks, and it's called Imbalance. Um, so what we have is normal Sudoku rules. We have some V's and X's, which connect cells that sum to five or 10, respectively. We have black dots connecting digits with a ratio of one to two, white dots connecting consecutive digits. Not all clues are given, so none of those XV or crop keys have a negative constraint. And we have four clues outside the grid of a type I haven't seen before. They indicate the um, the highest number of consecutive odd digits in that row or column. So if there are, I guess, in the two column, there can only be two odd digits in a row in that column. So uh, two is the highest number of those. Interesting. We'll see how this plays out. I have no idea how it's going to work. Do have a try on the link under the video, and I'm going to try now. Let's get cracking. So what shall we start with here? got these interesting little clusters of X's, all flanked by black dots. Now, what does that mean? Not a lot, actually. OK, this must be a small number because it's on a V. And the one it connects to on an X must be a large number. Let's try colouring those to start with. Um, I'll go green for the small numbers, purple for the larger numbers. So small is one to four, and I guess anything else. I mean, the, the purples I've highlighted so far must be six to nine. Now on the crocky dot, no, that doesn't mean I necessarily know what it is there. Ah, oh, this must be a crocky number though, and this must be a large crocky number. So those are six or eight. Because they're from six to nine, but they're on a black crocky dot. So they're connected to three or four. And look, those form a pair in column five, which is interesting. Then six or eight on the X must connect to two or four. So this is either a run going three, six, four, or four, eight, two. If it goes four, eight, two, this is going to be a one. It goes three, six, four. This can still be a two or an eight, annoyingly. Um, so this could go, what was it? Three, six, four, two. Then this would be a one. Three, six, four, eight. Hmm, that could be a seven or nine. Four, eight, two, one. This would have to be a two. So don't really know how that's going to play out. So this one connecting with a 2 or 4 is a 6 or 8. This one connecting on a V is a 1 or a 3. This is 2 or 4. So that's how the clusters work. What's this going to tell us? Let's have a look at this 4 thing. Right. Those two are definitely even. So maybe let's forget the high-low colouring. Let's go with even odd colouring instead. That might be a bit more interesting. Let's see how that works. So that's odd. These clusters are all even, aren't they? And this one's odd. So in the four... Ah, well, the four odds must come together, and they're obviously not up here. So that's even. Then these three are odd and connect but one more odd and one more even there to make that one. um 
who is the most odd together here. Now, do not have a three there, right. Now I'm just thinking that might tell us something here. Those two could be an even pair. Ah, oh, if they were an odd pair, be surrounded by evens. Now that would make the two work. There's no pro problem with that. Hmm. Two and four have been used up in the central box. Oh, that is quite interesting, is it? Yeah, these must be odd on this X because they can't be eight, two, or six, four now. Or if that's telling me anything else. These two don't think they can be a two eight or a six four either. Um, I'm not sure what they are. Now they could be even still. Yes, that's not certain yet. Got two odds and two evens in the central box. I don't quite know. So maybe we need to use the fact that these have to be different runs. I suppose that's proved both by the two and four being an opposition and the three and four, so that doesn't get anything resolved. Yeah, interesting. This is a bit of a sticking point here. I haven't got a digit in or anything. How about the bottom row with its four odds together somewhere? Hard to use. I mean, it doesn't prove that this one's odd. Or does it? Actually, yes. Look at box nine. We've got two odds there. There must be an odd in each of those consecutives. So that uses up four odds. So we can't have two odds in this section. We only have one. But it needn't be part of the run of four. If it was part of the run of four, they would be there. But if it wasn't, they could be anywhere over this side of the puzzle. Ah, that's not getting enough done. That odd pair sitting... Oh, sorry, consecutive pair. If that was a six, four, no, there'd be lots of ways of doing that. I don't know how to move on here. This is intriguing at this point. Two odds somewhere down here together. They're either both odd, surrounded by even, or they're both even. In which case, every other cell in the column is odd. Three, four. Thank you. If that's not three or seven, then three has to be three and seven. Three has to be in one of those two cells. Don't know how to use that either. Hmm. What am I missing here? Maybe this row with its two odds together only. That's strange to me how that could lead to anything that I could definitely conclude about the row. Cannot see it. Right. Maybe let's think a bit more about this run. If it goes three, six, four, one, two. Ah, it can't. Well, no, that was nonsense. It would go three, six, four, two, one. And that's impossible, actually, because that would be a one if that's a four. Three, six, four, two, one. Yes. So in fact, can it not go three, six, four, two? No, it can't. That's where it breaks. Goodness me. So this can't go three, six, four, two, because that can't be then a three or a one. Three would be there, one would be there. Right, so we've got a start. This is the four, eight. That's yeah, two on the X. This now has to be one, and this I don't know. Hang on, hang on, hang on. What am I doing now? This doesn't look like it works at all. Um, 
I thought I had come up with something that did work. Three, six, four. Oh, that could be eight. That will work. Four, eight, two, one, two won't work because that doubles the two. Oh, it's much simpler than I was real realizing. Right. So three, six, four is right. This has to be now eight because two won't work. That's what we've discovered. So this is seven or nine. This is one, six, four. That makes this two, eight, eight, two. Now I don't know why. Oh yes, I do know why. That's four. So this can't be four. That's one. That's three. And here is that's how these initial clusters have got going. Um, now this can't be an even pair because this cell can't be two, eight, four, or six. So that is an odd pair making 10. Um, two is the maximum number of odds in this column. So they must be surrounded with evens. Everything else in the column is odd. The parity shading seems to be working. So let's get the cells that we also know the parities of colored. Blue there. Now in this row, two odds at a maximum. Not sure how that works. Oh, four odds down here. No, that still doesn't tell us how we're going to finish off. Oh, there's an odd there. But that could it could still be four odds here. Oh, we can only have a maximum of one odd in this box, can't we? Oh, this need this pair needs a six. It's got to have an even digit. So it's six with either five or seven. Um, six, seven or nine with three, seven or one above. These are, oh, that's an eight, of course. This is two. Hmm. So they're not from one, two, or three. They also don't use a six, which is used up there. And that means they either use an eight here and seven, nine there, or there's a four together with five. So one in this box must come down into the bottom row. That's putting a one in those cells. Two's all, oh, and one is the only odd digit in the bottom row. So that one has become even. Interesting. So there was only going to be one odd digit in the bottom row. Right, so that's odd. Now we need a run of four odd digits in this row, the bottom row, and one is over there. So three, five, seven, nine must be in those cells. One, five, seven, nine. That means one and six of those two. Those are from four, six, and eight. Now I still haven't used this outside clue in row eight. Two odds at a maximum together. Difficult to use that actually at the moment still. Hmm. Right, what about this black dot? It can't be 6, 3 because of that 6. It can't be 8, 4. So it's got a 2 on it. That's got to be in this cell. This is 1 or 4. We know it's not 1 because that would require a 2 here. So again, we get quite a few bits of parity resolved there. Um. But not whether that's a six or that's a six yet. This and ah, oh, two and eight in column seven, they are sorted. So that's now a six four pair. So this is now a one two pair. How strange. Eight can't be there. So that's a four five pair. That's a six seven pair. Three and nine, we can place them. Five seven go here. That sorts out that this is a three. Got eight, that must be here. A one nine pair there. That's colour the eight. And indeed the one and nine are both odd, so we can colour them. Um that can't be three. 
no, what can this? Okay, so it's an oop. So it's a nine one pair there. Now that can still be even. It could be a four six pair. In fact, there must be a four in one of these three cells, and it can't be here because six can't be here. So it is a four six pair. That becomes six. These are from five, seven, and nine. This has to be an odd pair on the X. Um, let's do my coloring again. Keep it going because I'd have to finish it off at the end for you anyway. Now, five must be, ah, that must be three, seven because of where three goes in the box. This is a five, nine pair. This can't be five. That's not very helpful. Um, ah, six one down here. It's good. Color. There you go. Um, three, seven. That can't be three or seven. And this can't be three. So the three in the box is here. This is a five, seven pair as a result. This must be seven because it's got a five, nine pair looking at it. Uh, and up here we have two and eight, the even numbers left in the column. One, four, and nine. Coming down this start. Don't know much about their parities. Four, five has been resolved. And two, one below it. That resolves nine and one, which are offset. So they'll look across at five and nine. Uh, one, two, nine, eight, three, seven. No, this can't be five because it's on an X. So five in row five is resolved. This must be a three, seven pair, which forms a deadly pattern, but they're going to be resolved by this dot, I imagine. Can't have seven there. That's a five, nine pair. We can put two and one in. Um, still don't know what that is. Ah, but seven is in one of those cells. So we can place seven here. That gives us eight. This is five or nine. Five, nine, three, seven. Right, so this is even since it connects to an odd, and it can't be eight or six or four. I think we know what that is. Two there, three there. That sorts out that deadly pattern. Nice. Um, let's resolve the other things down at the bottom there. These have to all be odd because we've got or evens in the row. Um, in the colours, let's do a bit more odd marking and more even marking. I'm not making mistakes because I know they trigger people, even though they don't matter at this point. Um, one, eight, two, three. So there's got to be a five here. We've got this last one white dot to resolve. I don't know much about. Right, we've got one, four, and six to place in this column. In fact, that can't be one. The one in column one is at the top. Unusual. That gives us the one in box two. That's a four nine pair, is it? So this is a five and has been for a while. Sorry if you're shouting at that. Yes, I'm wearing the red. No, nine and five there. Right, now here, two, five, one, seven, and a four, six pair. So we can put in nine, three or eight, and surely that dot is going to reveal something in a moment. Two, nine, five, one, three, eight. This is four, seven, or six. Can't be six, because that wouldn't be consecutive to either of three or eight. Also four, six. Seven. Okay, this is a nine five pair. This is a three six pair. We've resolved the seven and six down here. Let's color them for you. And then how are we going to fix this? If this was, ah, oh no. Yeah. No, there are other candidates for three and eight in the row. So I need to work out. Oh, look, two is looking at that cell. There we go. Eight there, two there. That puts eight here on the dot. So now we know that's a seven. 
3 has sorted out 6, 3, that sorts out 4, 6. This is a very nice puzzle. That is a really good flow to the puzzle. For a debut, that is elegant. Thank you very much to Snacks. And there we go. I think that gets it done. We'll do the last bit of colouring. And then click the tick to see. And it doesn't look right. That's because I have not filled in the four six pairs. Thank goodness for that. Okay, that's all it was. There we go. That should be Phew. So that's a very nice puzzle. I hope you had a go at that. I had a really interesting dinner. I think it was a little bit easier to get started up here than I'd realized using that, that run of cells and the fact that they couldn't clash. Um, very clever start, actually. Almost symmetrical with the group down here, but not quite, which made all the difference. So great fun. And as always, thank you so much for watching us on the channel. Do subscribe if you haven't already. And I uh, hope to see you soon on Cracking the Cryptic. Bye for now.